Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. I believe that this is episode four. Last episode, we went ahead and designed our models and got them hooked up that way we can store them inside of a database. This episode, we want to go through and make sure we can actually interact with the backend application with a user interface or a user client. So let's go ahead and get into that and I'll see you guys in the video. So now the last thing we need to do to actually get this all working together like we want is to go ahead and make a controller layer. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out this. Can't reach my pinkies too short because we don't want to be making it here. We want to be sending it through a controller. And I'm going to go ahead and make one more package in here. We'll actually we'll make one more after this. But we're going to call this controllers. Inside here, I'm going to make a new class called authentication controller. So this is going to be where we do like our login, our registration, things of that sort. So in here, we are going to mark this with at rest controller because that is what this is going to be. We're also going to have an at request mapping. And we are going to mark this with slash auth. And this will play a big part later on. You'll see. So now all we need to do is go ahead and auto wire our user service. So private final user service. user service and then add auto wire it so at auto wired public uh, authentication controller user service user service this dot user service equals user service all right Save and go ahead and import this stuff that we need. Public. Cool. So now for the time being, we just want one single post mapping. So at post mapping to slash register. So essentially this is going to go to go to HTTP colon slash slash local post colon 8000 slash auth slash register. That's the endpoint that we're hitting. It's just going to be a public application user, register user, at request body is going to be an application user for the time being. And voila. So go ahead and fix this stuff up and return null. Save, let's see, what is this issue? The user here, there we go. It was confused, go ahead and import request body. We're good to go. So essentially all we're gonna do is just take this request body and say return user service dot register user and pass in the user. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So let me go ahead and open up Postman. I'll be back in one moment. So now that we're inside of Postman, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder or a new collection. And I'm going to rename this collection to footer request. That way we can have easy access to all the requests and we can save them. I'm going to go ahead and make a new request. This is going to be a slash auth slash register. And this is going to be a post request to HTTP phone slash slash local host colon 8000 slash auth slash register. And we need a body of raw JSON and inside the body, we need each of the parts of our users. So let's go ahead and pull those in. If we go into a user models application user, I'm literally just going to grab all of these and we will fix it up. We even need the rules. So this is going to be a little bit messy for a second here, but we'll fix it. So we need our user ID. User ID can just be zero. We need our first name. So first name can be unknown. We need our last name, of course. 
So go ahead and say coder. Got this, cool. Coder. We need our email. So go ahead and put in our email. So we'll just say email at test.com. Of course, we need our phone number. So our phone number will be 555-555-1234. Again, later on, we'll make it so that it doesn't matter which way you input it. For the time being, I'm just going to put it like that. Our date of birth. This one is going to go year, month, day. So for date of birth, let's just put um, 2022 or 20, yeah, 22 dash 07 dash 01. We need our username. Typically, this is going to be generated for us, but for the time being, it's not going to be because we haven't set it up. And this is just going to be username. And then finally, we need our string password. I don't think this is going to go through because of the JSON ignore, but we'll see. So our password will just be password. I scuffed this again. And then finally, our authorities is just going to be an empty array. So go ahead and say authorities. And this is just going to be an empty array. And we can kind of fix this up and make it a little bit better looking. Let me do that. Oops. There we go. So now, theoretically, we can go ahead and try to send a request. So let's go ahead and see what happens. The server is running. Wah, 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 401. Why do we get a 401? Because we haven't actually allowed our users access to the endpoint. So we need to do one last thing before we can actually send the user over. And that is make a security configuration and actually allow all traffic. And for the time being, we're just going to allow all traffic to the server. And then later on, we will reconfigure it so that it's only traffic to certain right places and things like that. We need to make one last package here. So say package com.security. I guess we could probably call this com.config instead. And then we're going to right click new class i'm going to call this security configuration we'll probably put some other configurations in here as well later on so at the top of it, we're going to say at configuration like so something that spring was not very nice about was that they changed spring security so now all the old the stuff that people have been using forever is deprecated and i had to relearn it completely so we're going to say public security filter chain. This is how Spring wants you to do it now. Filter chain is going to take an HTTP security. HTTP. And it could possibly throw an exception. So throws, not throws, throws, exception. All right. So go ahead and import all the stuff that we need here. Bean. Security filter chain, HTTP. So we are going to essentially set up a chain to do the stuff that we need to do our security. So first we're going to say HTTP.CSRF. This is something that we're not going to go into because I don't fully understand it. But I know that we want it disabled because we're not going to use CSRF tokens. We don't need to. And then the next thing we want to do is HTTP.authorize request. So this is essentially what says how we authorize things. We're going to say in request and we're just going to permit all. So essentially what this is saying is whenever you get a request, authorize it and just allow anyone to use the request. Later on, we're going to go back through and make it so not, not anyone can use it. Only people with certain roles uh, that are signed in. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Then finally, return HTTP.build. It looks like I need to restart the server because I got a small error. Sometimes whenever you change security configurations, it does not like it. But now as you see here, that it's all good to go. Everything is running. So now if we go back into Postman and try to make a request with this, it should go through. As you see, we get back our user. We have our user first name, last name, email, phone number, birth date, username, authority. 
we go into dbeaver and refresh our user. So users refresh. You can see that password still null because it's being JSON Nord and it's okay because I have a way around this the way that the Twitter flow works. It doesn't really matter all that much. So um, as you can see, we can now send a user from our Postman, get it into our server on the Spring Boot or through Java, and then actually store it in a database. So we are now one step closer to actually going through the actual steps of registering. I think that's going to be it for this episode. Next episode or the next series of episodes, we're going to go through and try to actually get the entire steps figured out and do all of that stuff and start working towards the way that Twitter actually works. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. This video has probably been split up into a couple parts, so I'll probably have to re-record the outro for the other part. But anyway, I appreciate everyone. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. If you didn't enjoy it, you can always leave a thumbs down. Any interaction with the video helps regardless, so I appreciate it. If you guys have any suggestions or something you want me to build or maybe things I should change, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to read them and try to get back to you guys as well. And of course, if you guys enjoyed, please hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of these videos. And if you hit the bell icon, you'll know exactly when they come out. I'll also try to link a playlist to all these videos. That way, if you missed them or you started somewhere else, you can go through and watch all of them. With that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next videos.